answer is live long, they grow fast, and they are survivors. Okay? Survivors. So, um, that red tannin in the bark, it's like natural insect repellent. It's very acidic. If there are people here who drink wine, when it has a lot more tannin in it, it's more bitter. Same stuff here. Tannic, it keeps out the bugs. So they are uh, impervious until they're old and failing anyway. Not old, but failing anyway. Natural insect repellent. Live on grow fast. Bugs, uh, drought. Californians, we're in drought again. Um, they have such a wide root system that they can survive drought very well. So live on grow fast. Bugs. About fire. Someone asked me about fire. So um, when the park service is in there putting out fires, they survive fire after fire after fire. Fire naturally would go through here every five to twenty-five years. And they live through fire fierce how the bark on the sequoia tree is it starts with the letter S, very soft or squishy or spongy. Okay? It does not burn well. So at the top of the grand tree, you can see jaggedy branches where lightning mm -hmm. has hit that tree and branches do burn. That's how fires start in the sparks. Lightning strikes up high, branches fall down, embers fall down, and they are trees that do burn, and the scars, a lot of them look like triangles, like the shape of a campfire. I know we're not having fires right now, because the fire's right here, so I'll feel like a uh, campfire, that shape would be. But that soft, squishy, spongy bark, it can get to be two to three feet wide on the big ones, and it does not burn well. It will burn, but what happens is the fire dies out. So they live through fire after fire after fire. And I don't have to do this out loud, otherwise I miss a piece. Bugs, drought, okay, we're in California, earthquakes. So um, if we were a narrow tree, with a deep tap root, an earthquake comes through here. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to hurt my elbows or knees. Earthquake comes through here, and we are like, ah, and it's easy to fall, okay? The sequoia roots are shallow and very wide. They stretch out about the, because we've got sciencey people here, I'll say about the uh, size of an acre. For the rest of us, about the size of a football field or a soccer pitch, okay? <laughs> Um, so they're huge, and when an earthquake comes, there was an earthquake here in 1872, and a lot of these sequoias were around for that, and the ground moves, from between Mount Whitney and here, the ground moves 16 feet. I'm about 5 feet tall, so put 3 of me, one on top of the other. That's how much the ground moved, and these trees with that wide root system survived that earthquake and all the other earthquakes that we had here. We had an uh, earthquake last week. Some of our buildings got cracks. Trees are just fine. So they live long, they grow fast, and they are survivors. But think about gold rush people who didn't get rich, most of them, uh, mining for gold. What won't trees survive? Ideas in all days. A saw, exactly. Logging. Uh, they didn't get rich, so the next thing was hunting or logging. Um, and I'll tell you this, there were logging camps near here. You can walk in big stump picnic area. There's a trail there. We've got a stump with a ladder on it. You can get up on a stump that's probably bigger than your living room unless you live in a mansion. Uh, it's a cool place to walk. There were a few logging companies. They all gave up. They didn't make any profit because... The wood is so soft and so lightweight. Now, they're big and heavy trees. When they come down, they crash and fly apart. But it's bad wood. It's not strong enough for the benches, for the fences, for that cabin if you walk past there. The biggest trees in the world got turned into garden snakes for the agriculture in the valley, into pencils and into toothpicks, the biggest trees in the world. The redwoods on the coast, very good wood. Strong wood. Uh, so 90% of those got logged. Here, only 30% got logged with a few logging efforts, and they stopped. Uh, so it's one of the things that helped save the trees. Okay, so that was the old days. This is the nowadays. What will trees survive now? Climate change. Okay, and if people get nervous about the words climate change, uh, I'll say the warming in the environment. I'll say uh, the changes that we have seen in the climate uh, over the last few years extremely. That's a problem. And I need to stop and take a breath for a second. 
So we're just in this big, beautiful forest. Does everyone just take a nice deep breath of our wonderful park air? Okay, I needed to do that. I probably actually shouldn't have told you to do that because people are surprised to learn that Sequoia Park and Kings Canyon Park are the two most polluted parks when it comes to air quality in the United States. City parks, parks in industrial areas, in ports, the most polluted. Here's how it happens, and this is again about us, the climate change thing. So air comes into the Central Valley over the cities of the San Francisco Bay Area, and it circulates around in the Central Valley because it's caught between the coastal mountains and the Sierra Nevada. And it picks up more pollution, yay, from the valley, the agriculture, the businesses, the cities and towns. But weather moves from west, from the Pacific, over the coastal mountains to east, and it is smacked right, the ozone smacked right up against the Sierra Nevada mountains. So just like we shouldn't be breathing that, neither should the trees or anything else in this neighborhood. So I will do one small commercial for myself and for the park service. Most people who come to parks are already environmentally conscious, already care about beautiful things like this. You probably, about, I don't want you to be discouraged, you probably are already doing lots of things that help with the environment. You know, I, whatever you're recycling or what you're driving, or are you walking or bicycles, uh, maybe you run a business, a small business or a big business, and you're shifting to greener and greener and greener. I know one thing I do, I don't wash my uh, dishes, my pans, and my dishes, because I eat the same thing every morning, I put them in the fridge for a few days. So I'm cutting down on water use. And I told someone that, and they said, that is really gross. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure you're already doing things and a little commercial. The more you Californians do uh, about helping the environment out, the better it is for this neighborhood. But we're not all from California here. So anywhere you live in the world, there's Mother Nature that you can give a boost to. You can help. Uh, also, you can lobby Congress about laws and regulations and stuff like that. Okay, end of that. So, um, tree facts from the old days, tree facts about the trees themselves, the survivors, the modern days. Um, just a few.